Welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Web Heads podcast, a special event podcast where we are going through every event from 1939 to current. And we are about, event wise, we are. I think we're breaking into the 90s. Yeah, we're 50 years in on events. A year into the podcast, we're 50 years into events. That's how little events they had. And it's picking up at an alarming rate. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> the other 95% is all within like the next 20 years. Yeah. So, should be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, welcome, guys. For those of you who haven't listened, that's what this podcast is. For those of you who have, thanks for coming back. The, the good thing that I realized... Oh, and I'm one of your hosts, DeMarco, along and with the other my... one, Steven. Yes. We are brothers. We're brothers. Happy, Happy and we're changing our color. Yeah, me Rest in peace, John Witherspoon, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? Um, oh, I was going to say the good thing about us moving further into like more modern mm-hmm. stuff is that. Now they they start doing less dialogue and just more uh, yeah. pictures. So, like, I say this all the time, but when we started this and we were reading books from, like, the 70s or oh, anything, Jesus. that could take me 20 to 25 minutes to finish reading because yeah. of dialogue. In modern comics, though, I can get through, depending on those, the, the book, mm-hmm. maybe three or four issues in the same amount of time. Yeah, I told you I was earlier. I don't can't remember if it was on podcast or off, but um, I'm reading the Dan Slot Silver Surfer mm-hmm. run right now from like 2014, 15 ish area. Um, the first night I read through maybe three or four issues in 45 minutes. Yeah, I was gunning through those things because it's yeah, it's the not that the art wasn't important back then but i feel like they rely a lot more on the artwork to tell part of the story yeah now or recently Mm -hmm. than they did way early in the early days and they used to do a lot more explaining like over explaining yeah older books yeah they didn't do so much of like how they do now where it's like Oh, you remember when I, I killed so-and-so, and then they do the little box at the bottom back in uh, Avengers 23. Yeah. So you can go back and check it out. Before, they were like, you remember when I killed so-and-so, and I I took the knife, and I twisted it in his <laughs> chest, <laughs> and then I took his wife out for ice cream after? Like, they give you the whole story in, like, a little yeah. panel every time they have to reference something before. And it doesn't sound that like people actually talk. No. No. It's, yeah, like you're talking to the people that you spent every day with for the last 45 years yeah, and explaining what happened last week in full detail. And I noticed that they do a lot more thought bubbles in older books than they do in more recent ones. Yeah, like, that part I kind of liked. The thought, I mean, because sometimes they would do like hella thought bubbles yeah. and then dialogue bubbles. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, there's too much going on. Yeah, it could be too on. much. But I, I did like the... The fact that every character wasn't speaking out loud every time they were talking. Yeah. it's They still use them, but not as much. Yeah. But, yeah, this is what that podcast is. We're just going through every event since 1939. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're doing all the hard work for you. <laughs> giving you that Marvel history that you didn't <laughs> the know The quality you of it. Sometimes <laughs> good, sometimes not. <laughs> that's what you get when you don't want to read and <laughs> sometimes it's our fault sometimes it's not but hey we did it it's like when your your teacher says you know what our dad told us told me one time is that uh like you really like you have to 
for somebody who said that, hey, just get, like, I don't care, just pass the class. For somebody who constantly told me just, uh, I know you don't want to be at school, but if you just pass the class, they'll leave you alone. Mm. For somebody who told me that, to also tell me that you have to do more work to fail or to not learn something than you do to actually learn it, in some cases, that doesn't sound like it's coming from the same person. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are. It's like, it's like which one of these quotes came from this person? And yeah. you choose one. It's choose like wrong, one. wrong, both, both, <laughs> both of them. That's him. And the the only thing I I meant to tell, I try to tell this to people when I'm explaining the podcast is that I, I grew up listening to a whole bunch of different kinds of music, but I gravitated mostly towards hip hop music. Mm. And then uh, our dad uh, always made it a point to tell us where a sample came from and like let us listen to the original version of it. Mm. So then the next time I hear it, I remember, oh, cool, that is that is the same part that they took from that song. Um, and I just like learning. I like knowing the history of things. Even just random stuff. Mm. Uh, I think both of us, you and I, are people that uh, will have the most random facts in our head at any time. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> they will also just come out at any random time. Um, but I, I just like having that that knowledge with my music and with the comic books and shit. And, and the cool thing about comic books is that um, some writers are allowed to change things mm. about a character's uh, being or powers or shit like that. So it's cool seeing those changes over the years, seeing the comparing the vision from 1942 to what he is in the movies, or seeing the Tony Stark be uh, drunk in the comics and this egotistical like billionaire playboy on the comics or in the comics and then be the exact same thing in the movies. Mm. It's uh, just cool shit. I like seeing the changes and the things that stay the same. Yeah. And there's a lot of kids and older, sometimes older people, 20s, 30s, whatever, trying to get into comic books, don't know where to start or just started at a certain point and then don't really know anything that happened before and i think that shit's important yeah the same with uh with music and how uh hip-hop artists i don't really understand a lot of it right now (laughs) but it seems like from interviews a lot of the newer artists don't some of them don't give a shit about the past (laughs) and i think that's kind of weird so what have you been up to (laughs) (laughs) well have a trip to Vegas coming up. Okay. I'm going to be leaving on, at the time of this recording, on Thursday. Okay. I'll be flying out. And then we're going to the uh, the Viral Sensation uh, Festival, uh, the one we were young, Fest. Okay. So we're going to that on that Saturday. Is that a metal show? Not metal. More like emo. Like. Oh. Early 2000s, okay. mid 2000s emo music, um, which I'm not too familiar with, mm-hmm. except I know Paramore and Paramore's gonna be there. Yeah. Oh man. I think that they're closing out the night, and My Chemical Romance is gonna be there. And there's like maybe I can probably count all the bands that I know. Mm-hmm. I could probably like count all of them on like one hand. But I'm going for my girlfriend because she's really into it. So I was like, why not? It's Vegas. You know, I've never been. And, yeah, that'll be fun. Fucking Paramore's gonna be there. Yeah. That new song slaps. <laughs> I love that song. I have that. I, I feel like my Spotify end of the year thing is just gonna be, like, if I could have just one song in, like, the top five and just that be all top five, mm. it would probably just be... Uh, Bad Habits by Steve Lacey, and then This Is Why by Paramore. <laughs> Already. That song came out like three weeks ago. 
<laughs> I've been listening to a lot of Steve Lacey lately. You have been? Yeah. Yeah. At work. That uh, The Gemini Rights one yeah. album that you just came out with, that one's really good. Yeah. There's just, some songs I didn't care for, but for the most part, it's pretty good. I'll just go to his page and then just hit play on whatever mm-hmm. plays. If you go on Spotify, for those of you that have Spotify, if you go, if you play Bad Habits and then do the Bad Habits radio, mm. every song that's on there, every time I've gone on there, it's just been like heat the whole time. It's been perfect. Yeah. I get, uh, I, yeah, every time I do it and then, like, something, a new artist pops up, mm. I get, like, Thundercat. Um, have you ever listened to, I think I sent you one of his songs. Thundercat? Yeah. Oh, I listen to Thundercat oh, all okay. the time, yeah. Yeah, I get a lot of that. It's, like, some other artists. But I like that music at work because it's just so, like, with, like, the bass lines and, mm-hmm. like, it's just so, like, funky yeah. for, for just sitting at work. I used to listen work. to a lot of, uh... Benny Sings mm-hmm. and Rex Orange County, but I have to take him off my playlist for a little bit. He's <laughs> yeah. In, yeah, he's in some some hot water <laughs> with some accusations. I can't get behind it. So, uh, sorry, Rex. You have not. I'm not even sorry, man. You're out of here for until I figure out what's really going on with you. <laughs> yeah, People man. always tell me like, oh, like no, like I'm a fan of their music, not them as a person. I can't separate the two. That's what me and Danny were talking about yesterday because uh, we went to uh, our friend Juan. Mm-hmm. He had a party, so we were there. Oh, yeah. Had, it was happy birthday. It was a birthday party. Yeah. By the time this comes out, his birthday would have passed. His yeah, birthday well, happy first. belated one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we went to his party, and then music was playing, and Chris Brown's song came on. Mm-hmm. And we started talking about how's how people can separate the two, mm-hmm. what he did versus his music. But I don't understand how you can do that. Yeah, I can't. You do that thing, and then you've still done it. It yeah, doesn't go away. Yeah, the person who did that thing is making this music. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not doing it. By you listening to the song and enjoying it, you're supporting somebody who does that. Yeah. Which, if it was any other person, you would say... No, I, I'm not supporting somebody who does that. But no. because this person's giving you something you like, it no, just doesn't make sense. Brown was never making music, but he was making T-shirts. You're not going to buy the T-shirt because yeah. it's a fire T-shirt, and he's a shitty person. Yeah. I mean, I'm not slapping on R. Kelly songs because <laughs> I, I, oh, he made good music. Cool, he made good music, but he was like doing nasty things. Yeah. Like, you can't separate no. that because he was doing it while he was making yeah. the music that you like. No, I'm good. I took all <laughs> Kanye off my playlist. Uh, Rex Orange County's off. Uh, I don't know. There's N- Nicki Minaj wasn't on there in the first place, but <laughs> any song that she might have featured on, out of there. Uh, so you're going to Vegas. Going to Vegas. I'll be there for like five days, um, and then come back, and that'll be the. The last of our trips for the rest of the year, I think. And then, yeah. All right. Yeah, at the, at the time of recording, I am a few days away from leaving for Denver. Denver, for Colorado. For the first time ever to go see a Broncos game. Nice. Yeah. Me and our, our wonderful father are flying from, he's flying from Seattle to Denver, I'm flying out of Oakland, and um, it should be interesting. I'm going to say it should be fun. I'm banking on it being fun. Uh, We're going, Saturday we get out there, I don't really know, we don't really have, sorry guys, we don't really have any plans Mm. that day, just want to go to uh, Mile High Comics. The, I believe it's the biggest comic book store in the U.S. So I want to check that out. I'm going to try to leave some stickers over there. <laughs> and then, um, and from what I've seen, there's not tons of, like, touristy kind of things to do in Denver. Really? Yeah. They have a U.S. Mint where they make the money. Sounds boring. Yeah. And they have some ghost tours. 
<laughs> Dad won't want to do that. You won't do that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'll wait for you back at the hotel. I'm not doing that. Uh, but it's it's mostly like like bars, restaurants. They have <clears throat> the the famous uh, Red Rock Amphitheater. I think that's what it's called. But it's like a big ass like amphitheater in the like basically in like the Red Rock like mountainy kind of area like built into it. Hmm. Mm. But is that the one with like the the steps that are kind of or like the seating is kind yeah. of built into it? Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was hoping that there was going to be like a show I might want to see or something there. But I don't think there is that weekend. And then Sunday we go to the game. They're playing the Jets. And da, 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 da. and then Monday we're taking a tour of the stadium. Oh, nice. Yeah, Bronco Stadium. Which should be cool. I wanted to do the the baseball stadium on that Saturday, but I don't know if they're doing it because the season's over. Um, but, fuck it. The, the Broncos one's all I really need to see. And then we we fly out like a few hours after the the stadium tour, mm. so we should see how it goes. I'm I'm just nervous about getting on the flight. I'm not. I haven't really flown too much since I've before we went to Seattle last year. I think it was. That was the first flight that I had taken since I was maybe like eight or nine. Damn. Yeah, so like twenty something years in between flights. And I, I, it might have been before eight or nine, maybe six or seven or something like that. I don't really remember flying anywhere. So we'll, we'll see. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'm just, gonna. I'm just gonna download a whole bunch of movies on yeah. my phone. <clears throat> download uh, a few albums, some playlists. It's a two and a half hour flight, so it shouldn't be too bad. I mean, what what, what uh, airline are you flying? Uh, Southwest. Okay, they have those movies on there. Yeah. So, you got that. I mean, one movie should be Yeah, I'm going to try sufficient. to get that early check-in so I could get my seat before everybody else. Mm-hmm. I'm not taking that uh, the aisle seat, though. <laughs> no, not the aisle seat. The um, emergency exit seat. <laughs> I took it one time, and then I was like, damn, am I really ready to do this if I, if I need to? <laughs> yeah, when I've, when we... First went to Seattle. I was like in that first boarding group, mm. and then I sat in that in that it in that that row, and she was like, she instantly came over. She was like, "All right, just so you know, this seat you're gonna have to be in charge of opening this door and closing it if anything happens." And then I was like, "Oh, okay, I'm gonna move my seat." <laughs> I, I had I, there was no hesitation in my voice. I knew I, I did not want that responsibility. <laughs> I, I I sat in there and then they told me and I was like yeah I'm ready, and then I thought about it. I was like damn if something goes wrong I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> no. What I gotta hold the door open for everybody? <laughs> what? Um, we didn't talk about it last week, but uh, Werewolf by Night. Oh yeah 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 yeah, that was a good, uh, Marvel special. Yeah. Marvel Studios special. Um, I'm trying to figure out where the specials kind of like fall. I mean, I guess it's only an hour, so Mm -hmm. it's not really a TV. It's not a TV show because there's not multiple. No. But it's not really a a full length movie either. Yeah. So I like that they can kind of do that now with, Mm -hmm. you know, just some character just kind of throw them in there. Yeah. I mean, it was uh, like 50 minutes or something like that. Mm hmm. It was good. It was shot beautifully. Um,. Michael, I can't pronounce the last name. Yeah. Giannaco or something like that. I'll look it up. (laughs) Keep talking. Well, yeah, I thought it was really good. I thought I was, it's still kind of strange to me that they're going with the the supernatural Mm -hmm. stuff in the Marvel Universe right now just because everything. Michael Giacchino. Giacchino. But, yeah, just because everything so far has been so, like, I say in Earth quotes, based. Uh, like, based in reality. Yeah. And for them to kind of bring in, like, more, like, supernatural, like, mm-hmm. Moon Knight touched on it a little bit. Yeah. But it wasn't, like, as hardcore heavy as, like, a werewolf. 
yeah. <laughs> and a yeah. man thing, you know. But uh, yeah, I like. To, uh, I hope that they do more with like the presentation ones, mm-hmm. and just kind of give us like maybe some characters that might show up in like other movies or something, or like just the easy way to kind of understand the character before they show up in the movie. Yeah, it's it's kind of like when they were doing those Marvel one shots. Yeah. A little bit, just a, a longer extended mm-hmm. one of it. Um, but I liked it. I I thought they were going to go, like, more... Not that Man-Thing wasn't comic accurate, uh, but he had more consciousness in the show yeah. than he does in the comic books. So I thought that... I was surprised when they made him more of, like... Like aware like a, of things. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of made him more like a, a, almost like Groot in a way. Yeah. And I, um, but I liked it. I, I, I definitely would like to see those characters interact with other ones mm-hmm. going forward. But, I mean, if, if Man-Thing shows up in Blade or something like that, I'd be fine with it. I, he's, Man-Thing's not a character where I think we need a whole series to himself and, he needs to be a prominent feature going forward. No, I mean, but yeah, I feel like the whole supernatural side can, they can kind of fit in anywhere, yeah. whether it's TV show, present special presentation, or a movie. Mm-hmm. I don't think they'll go the whole movie route. I think they want to try to keep it more like in that middle ground. I think yeah, I think the supernatural stuff, because it doesn't pertain to any of the other. The Celestials, the uh, the Captain Americas, like none of that's that world. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you where you put it or how often you give it to us because yeah. it's it's always just something that's not really super prevalent with the main with what's going continuity on continuity yeah. of everything. That's true. So like if we if we got random like special presentations once a year for like a holiday or just even toss one out in the middle of the year or something like that. Cool. I don't care. I could do a Howard the Duck one. Season two of She-Hulk, I'm telling you. I heard they're doing, they're going to take a lot of like the ones that they're going to make TV shows and start doing the special presentations for them. Mm-hmm. And one of them was Nova, I think. Yeah, I saw that. I also heard they're, uh, I don't know if it was true or not, but they're making Armor Wars a movie now? Yeah. I wonder why they're doing that. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like as like a, as a fan, I like the shows, mm-hmm. but I feel like a lot of it is just, there's a lot of filler stuff in there. Like, there's... Yeah. A lot of character growth, but mm-hmm. sometimes it's just like it's character growth, and not really much else. To I think like... the thing is, I think shows can be really, really good if you use if you have six episodes and you use two or three of them for character growth. I, I don't write shows, so I don't really know how well that works. But if you use more of it for character growth, and then like, we see how that, you have to do it kind of quickly, because it's six episodes, but you give me character growth, like, kind of like in Miss Marvel. Mm-hmm. I think that was a good example of, like, showing me the character before, she gets her power, she's learning how to use it, and then she is actually, like, out there, like, using them to save people. Mm-hmm. But then, you have She-Hulk, which I do think was a really good show. But there was a few episodes in there where it was just like, probably didn't need it. Mm. Like you said, last episode, the the wedding episode, and I can't remember which other one, but there was, I think there was one more that was just like, eh, okay. But the, the problem is that I don't think every character that's getting a show maybe needs what, five hours of story? Yeah. yeah. I just don't think it... I agree. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't... I, I think 
some characters will just benefit from just here's this person that wasn't really involved with the world and then something happens now they're involved mm. here's them kind of accepting their powers and then whatever happens at the end now i to not to say that because when I was saying it, I was like, damn, that's following the same structure like all of the movies have. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be opposed to them doing things a little bit different. I don't know how they would do things different in terms of introducing a character. and. Yeah, well, that's the hard thing. Is like Armor Wars in the comic books is like uh, Tony gets all of his information stolen. Yeah. All these other companies are in the first one. Uh, one guy steals all the information, distributes it, or sells it to other people. He uses it in everybody's then armor. Then everybody's and... has little pieces of his armor everywhere. Yeah. Um, so it it seems like it would be a good fit for a show, because it's in a, a two hours. Can you give us all that information? I don't know, but it's yeah. I don't know. I, I'm. It's. I feel like. The only reason you would take it from a, a show where you would have maybe six episodes, it gives you about three and a half hours, maybe four hours to tell the story. The only reason you would take it down from that to a movie where you get two hours to tell everything is maybe because you're going <clears> to <throat> explain how we get to that point in something else. Or something like a different show or movie is going to lead us to mm-hmm. why that's happening. It could be that, like, maybe they want the budget just to be more of the budget good to go towards more special. Because it's going to be a special effects heavy, like, yeah. thing, you know? Mm-hmm. You're going to have all these different Iron Man suits and all that. Yeah. So maybe it's just like <laughs> we're already getting flack from people because we're forcing all these VFX artists to work extra hours. Yeah, that could be it, too. You know, let's just cut it down, get the most effects, best effects out of it, and then, you know, that'll be it. Yeah, that probably makes more sense. I feel like um, Ironheart's going to, like, factor into it. Yeah. Because he'll probably show up and be like, you know, how'd you get this armor, Mm -hmm. and then this and that. I... That'd be kind of like, because what if, like, Rhodey becomes her sort of, like, mentor? You know, like, she took inspiration from Iron Man, but mm-hmm. with Tony gone, like, Rhodey has to be the one to, like, kind of teach her the, the ropes. Yeah. And then, you know, he's not too sure about it, because he kind of always looked at Tony, even though he was kind of doing his own thing. Mm-hmm. And he, he saw what happened with Tony. Yeah. And... Doesn't want that to happen to her. What if Armor Wars... Yeah, what if it's not exactly like... The comics. The comics where it's like a bunch of people having the armor, Mm -hmm. but more like... Or it could be, but like, you know, there's just some sort of twist on it. Incorporating Riri. Yeah. Or if maybe it's something that she built Mm. and then didn't... May, probably maybe didn't put the right protections in mm-hmm. to keep it from getting out to anybody else. And now her tech is out there. Because she has... She's going to be in Wakanda forever. Yeah. Is Do we know if her character is from Wakanda in the MCU? No, she's... Uh, I think she's from America, but I think they're doing what... Uh, at the end of Black Panther, where they are starting to do those, like... I don't know if they were schools or, like, mm. I think she's part of, like, that where she okay. went to, like, the Wakandan, like. So, I mean, this is a wild guess, but I can, I'm going to jump off the ledge and say that her tech is probably going to have some kind of vibranium tech to it. So, like, even if she doesn't have any of Tony's specs on any of the armor man's or iron man stuff she's building her own stuff and then she's adding vibranium to it Mm -hmm. doesn't protect it well enough to not have that information leak out there with people knowing that she's 
but they don't know that she's Ironheart, but knowing that Ironheart is out there, mm. they see this new tech. It's maybe doing some cooler, newer things that Tony's suit didn't, that he never even thought to do. Mm. And then now, bits and pieces of her stuff, her tech is out there. I wouldn't be mad at that. Yeah, it's a good twist on like the the story of the books. Mm. Still kind of keeps the spirit of the story, but yeah. updates it to what's going on in the MCU. Yeah, I mean, I see that being a movie. Let's make it happen, guys. I tell you every other week, I'm here and I'm ready to write. <laughs> All right. Uh, I know we got to get started on your story, but real quick, let me tell everybody what's coming uh, comic-wise this week. We got to, uh, let's see. Wrong week. All right. So <clears throat> you've been reading Judgment Day? Yeah. Are you where are you? Are you caught up on it? I still have to read issue five. Okay. Did you read the uh, Judgment Day Avengers X Men Eternals ones, like the uh, side story parts? No. Uh, if you get a chance, pick those up. All of, is there's, it? There's, there's three. There's uh, Judgment Day Avengers, Judgment Day X Men, oh, okay. and Eternals. The Eternals just came out uh, when this episode drops it came out two weeks ago so in in real time it came out uh this week okay um so the eternals one should still be out there but it says that they're the these are the only critical tie-ins to the Mm. the rest of the story but uh when this episode drops tomorrow these comic books are coming out uh the last judgment day number six is coming out uh, Iron Cat number five. That story's been pretty fun. Uh, Felicia Hardy, Iron Man, and I can't remember the last girl's name. But right now they're fighting a, an evil AI that's uh, using Tony's tech to uh, destroy the world. And it's been pretty fun. Uh, we got a. Mech Strike Monster Hunters number five. I haven't read any of those. Probably won't. <laughs> uh, New Mutants number thirty one. Star Wars Doctor Afra number twenty five. Uh, Strange number seven. Strange Academy uh, Finals number one. Amazing Spider Man twelve. Uh, looks like uh, John Romita's back. <laughs> so John Romita Junior is back. Sorry. Um, not super thrilled about that, but. <laughs> Cool. Uh, the Variants, number four, the Jessica Drew story. That one's really good. I tried reading the first one um, <clears throat> in Arizona. Mm-hmm. We were just in the car for how long, so I was like, let me try reading. Yeah. But I couldn't focus on the words because it was just moving too yeah. much. So I got to go back and finish that one. The first I have a, the first three are really good. And it, I don't know how if it's going to be a full story or if it's like a limited series, but either way, it's really good. Uh, Thunderbolts number three is coming. That one's also pretty good. Uh, Hawkeye's leading the team of Thunderbolts that is under, uh, Mayor Luke Cage. He's the mayor of New York? Yeah. Oh. After just taking down Kingpin. And Kingpin had his own Thunderbolts team that was just running, uh, running that city to the ground. And now... Luke Cage wants to uh, to turn the name around and let the people of New York know that the Thunderbolts name means safety. Why not just create your own team? <laughs> Different name. You gotta, you gotta use the name, man. Otherwise, people don't know. <laughs> we got uh, Ultraman, the mystery of Ultra 7, number three. Don't know anything about that one. Uh, Venom, number 12. Wild Cards, The Drawing of Cards, number four. I believe that one is, um, I don't know if it's written by the guy who did uh, Game of Thrones. Or he's like overseeing the story. Mm. But he has something to do with it. Oh, like the actual book author? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Wolverine, number 26. uh, X-Men Legends, number three. Did you read any of those ones? I'm in the middle of the second one. 
I don't know if it's because I was going to bring it up to you. Mm. I don't know if it's because I was tired, but the second one, I was just like, this is so boring. No, it was boring. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the whole beast so the, thing. I was the, like, first, the thing I didn't realize at first was that uh, the stories are um, like prequels to like major plot points in the X-Men history. Oh, uh, okay. So like the first one was like... Wolverine and... Hulk. Yeah. And then this second one was uh was boring. But I don't remember what it led to. But yeah, the each one is uh like a prequel of what leads to a certain plot point in uh, X Men history. So, cause if you when you get to the end of the second one it tells you to to continue the story, read whatever uh, whatever it's next, followed but into. It's, it's like an X Men comic from like eighty two or something like that. Oh, I really like the first one. The first one's good. I think, but I also think it was because this one I found boring because I don't really like Beast as mm-hmm. a character. Yeah. So once he kind of popped up, I was like, okay, whatever. But I like the first one because I think it was following Wolverine more. Yeah, and the comic was uh, or the cover was really cool on this last one. Which one did or you Or at least get? I got, I got like the one that looks like it's drawn in like color pencil. Oh yeah, that's one I got too. Yeah. And it looks like this one that's coming out this week is, um, it looks like a uh, long shot. Uh. That's a long shot story, so. And then Exterminators number two. That first one was really good. Exterminators. Yeah, it's a uh, Dazzler. Jubilee, and that's fucked up. I just said it was really good, and I can't remember. <laughs> X-23, and um, somebody else. I can't remember. But it was, it was good. It was funny. It's, uh, there was a lot of cursing and stuff. And it, it was just really, it was actually funny. Maybe I'll go pick that one up. Yeah. But it looks like that was pretty much it. And then we got a, there's a Moon Knight annual coming out too. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I might check that out. But that's it. Let's uh, get started now that we're 40 minutes in. All right. Okay. So we are talking about this week uh, a crossover event called Axe of Vengeance. Can you turn my... I I sound loud in my head. That might be because I moved my mic closer to you. Hello, hello? Mm, I think I still sound loud. 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 Loud? Okay, that's better. Okay. All right. Yeah, so we're reading Acts of Vengeance. Okay. Now, when you asked me me what book I wanted to read... Mm -hmm. I was kind of hoping this was a Ghost Rider mm-hmm. story because it was like it said vengeance, so mm-hmm. I was like, "Cool." You asked me, and I was like, "All right, let me look these up and see which one is the shortest one." <laughs> <laughs> so this is why I can't let them choose anyone. <laughs> so I looked them up. They both had tons of issues connected <clears throat> to them. Mm-hmm. I was like, "All right, one of these, neither of these are connected to Ghost Rider at all." Um, and I was like, all right, let me just pick this one. This one, it ended up being kind of cool. Um, for all the issues it says that are involved with the story, mm-hmm. most of those aren't important to the main story. Okay. So there it says, read, you know, uh, Cloak and Dagger, Fantastic Four, X-Men, mm-hmm. X-Factor, Spider-Man. And I'd say mostly the story of all the Avengers and Spider-Man. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I found, like I told you earlier, I found somewhere that kind of like lays out all the issues and whether or not they're important mm-hmm. or not. And so for what I found, there was around 13 or 14 issues that were important to the continuity. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we'll go through those ones today. Okay. All right. This you think this is a one part episode? This is definitely be a one part. Okay. Yeah. So starting off, 
We're going to go into Avengers 311. Yes. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Good, how are you? Shout out to my mother-in-law. I'm the strongest one in the house, baby. <laughs> Just proved it. Fario can't say nothing now. What an ego boost. <laughs> Can you open this, please? Of course. <laughs> no questions asked. Yeah, Danny always asked me to open like her Gatorades or her waters. She can't open Gatorades? <laughs> <laughs> I noticed yeah. that you would spread with the water bottles. These are... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, both. <laughs> I heard the Gatorades and didn't even hear anything else. That's because we used to drink Gatorade like it was water. Yeah. <laughs> we just... <laughs> My mind, <laughs> yeah. There was one time I, I cracked open a Gatorade and just smashed it down like it was just straight water. <laughs> I was done in like 10 seconds. <laughs> Never felt worse about buying Gatorade in my life. <laughs> I didn't even get to savor it. <laughs> I was just trying to show off. <laughs> All right. Back to the story. All right. Avengers 311. So this one, uh, when you look at the cover art to mm-hmm. it, uh, it has, like, the whole Avengers team. Like, Thor is on it. Like, Captain America. Everybody. They're mm-hmm. all in there fighting robots. But this story literally just <laughs> involves Quasar and... Other civilians who work on Avengers Base. <laughs> <laughs> no other heroes. <laughs> it's the janitors. <laughs> so it starts with uh, Quasar. He's coming back from a mission. And he's trying to get the Avengers on, you know, on the ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, but nobody's answering. So he's coming into Hydro Base. I, I don't like the name of that. It just sounds <laughs> so stupid. Hy- is hydro Base or Hydro Base? Hydro Base. <laughs> it's the Avengers floating island. Like they have a few literal geniuses on this team. They, and that's what they thought of. They have it's a literal like, like the size of like a big park with like a building. They have a mountain on there for some reason, but it's all floating on top of like these containers. Uh, so Quasar's trying to ring somebody to like say, "Hey, I'm coming into Hydro Base. Like, what's going on?" Uh, but as soon as he lands, like there's nobody there. So he's like, "Okay, something's up." Mm-hmm. He goes into the building. Uh, he sees uh, the people working there, which are just normal people. Uh, Peggy Carter, uh, a man named Madaka, uh, Jarvis, and there's some other people. So they're like all wondering what's going on, like why nobody, why they can't get a hold hold of any of the Avengers. Mm-hmm. And so they're just going about their business, trying to figure that out. And then we cut to. Let me pull it up real quick. Where'd it go? Uh, I do like this cover, though. Okay. Yeah, so he goes to the mansion, asking everybody where everyone's at. Can't get a hold of anybody. We then cut to uh, this mysterious guy uh, in this almost like a, a meeting meeting room. And in the shadows, you see one guy in in blue but you can't tell who it is. And you see another guy in green. You can obviously tell it's Dr. Doom. Uh, and they're talking to this guy who is basically just telling them, you know, I know you guys have a problem with these heroes and it's, you, you keep getting defeated each time. You guys go in with the same tactics. The heroes become used to your tactics. It's just a roundabout. Mm-hmm. What we need to do is we need to get to, to create an alliance and basically you will take this person's hero and you will take this person's and then because they're not used to you know fighting everybody else so as long Is as you guys did in space chair <laughs> <laughs> did they i can't remember if it was the first one or this the shitty one but i feel like they they were like uh they know all of our moves so they switched oh yeah yeah that right. they pretty much did that so he's like telling them, okay, here's your, here's the plan. And then Doom and you don't, you can kind of tell, but it's the Mandarin. 
He looks like he's wearing like <laughs> Shredder's armor from the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> uh, so he, yeah, they're going about that, and then back on Hydro Base, they're talking about where the other Avengers are and why nobody is uh, calling in on the radios. And then the base starts to shake. There's like earthquake, but it's a little bit harder to fill. And the whole base is shaking, so it has to be a really big earthquake if mm-hmm. it's going to be earthquake. But then they find out that it's not an earthquake. It's actually robots that have just popped up from under the ocean and they're flying through the base. So like the flotation devices that they have on the base mm. are being punctured uh, by these robots. So it's just Quasar and Peggy Carter and Madaka and some other people. And so they, they're the only first line of defense for the mansion. Mm-hmm. So they hop out. They start kicking robot ass, you know, with guns and laser beams flying everywhere. And they're actually doing a pretty good job for the most part up until uh, they they take down a few of the robots. But then the robots are still pretty much active. Like, their arms can still, like, move. Mm-hmm. So they start getting whooped by, like, just disembodied arms. <laughs> And they can't take it anymore. And Quasar is even being taken over by all the robots because they're just getting piled up on. Guys, I can't take this anymore. (laughs) And then uh, we jump over back to, well, actually Nebula shows up. Nebula and Star Fox show up. Um, They're in space. That comes in later. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And then... Yeah, the the island's being taken over. They can't stop these robots. Uh, But the robots are kind of drawing them away from the fuel tanks that they have on the island. Mm -hmm. So Quasar notices that one of the robots are, or a couple of them are leading over to the tanks to try to blow them up. So he stops them. But little does he know, they've actually implanted bombs on the fuel tanks. So after he destroys those robots, he goes back to the mansion to help out everybody else. But as they're in there and they think they're safe, the robots just decide to leave. So they think they won and, you know, everything's good. Mm -hmm. But as the robots leave, the fuel tanks explode and then the island's going down. And so Quasar is like, okay, I have to try to keep the island up as long as possible. You guys get all the, everybody who's on the island into the Quinjets. And so there's like regular ass people who just work here. Like, this is just their job. So they have to pile Get everybody in. on to the Quinjets. Quasar is, like, underwater, just holding up this island for as long as he can. Um, and then Peggy almost dies because she's trying to save as much data as possible to kind of just send to the other Avengers if they can. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's sending, you know, help, please help, and no one can hear her. I didn't even realize that Peggy was an Avenger at any point. Well, she works there. <laughs> no, <Okay>. I mean, <laughs> just as much as anybody who works at Disneyland <laughs> is an actual Disney cast member. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> if you work here, you're an Avenger. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> she probably just tells everybody that. Oh yeah, I'm an Avenger. I'm a, like an official Avenger now. Yeah, like. You guys don't want me to get Iron Man over here, right? You guys want to keep messing with me? So just put the whipped cream on my coffee like I asked. It's not that hard. <laughs> you guys act like your job is so hard. <laughs> you know how hard it is to be an Avenger? <laughs> me and Steve Rogers go on runs all the time. You know how far he runs? <laughs> and I can keep up with him. <laughs> so you really want to be messing with me? You guys really need to watch your back. <laughs> Don't mess with me, okay? I'm tired of this. Is there a manager I can speak to? <laughs> Peggy Carter, Avenger. <laughs> <laughs> and then Vision comes in. It's like, hey, Viz, what's up? He just looks at her and just like... Peggy, Steve wants you back in the, <laughs> so, in the mansion. <laughs> we told you to clean the toilets 20 <laughs> minutes ago. There's still shit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is not for me. As you know, I don't use the bathroom. <laughs> but my wife needs a clean bathroom. And you were supposed to do that 20 minutes ago. So please take care of it. So we follow uh, 
Yeah, Peggy's trying to send the signal out, but it's too late. The island's already... The mansion's flooding. The island's flooding. It's no use. So she accepts her fate, and she's just like, hey, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Like, at least I try... Die try. Die an Avenger, baby. <laughs> but then Quasar is like, no. And so he swoops in. <laughs> uh, he picks her up, and he drops her on, like, a, a Quinjet, and then they just watch the island sink into the bottom of the bay. <laughs> And that's the end of uh, three eleven. <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> and then we move on to the next one, Spectacular Spider Man one fifty eight. Okay. So in this one, uh, the cabal of villains, mm-hmm. uh, it's now Magneto, uh, Doom, uh, the Wizard, uh, Mandarin. And Red Skull. And so they've all decided now that they're going to send uh, one of the villains to go take care of Spider-Man. Because they think, you know, this will be an easy fix. So they send the Trapster, also known as Pace Pot P. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know what's funny is that, like, sometimes when, like, team-ups like this happen, it's like, with the superheroes, you know, like, Spider-Man can hang with the Avengers and, like... The Hulk can come in every once in a while and be with everybody, and it doesn't seem out of place. Yeah. Even the X-Men can show up and, like, not feel like they're below the Avengers. But then when you get to the villains, it's like, what is the Trapster doing here <laughs> with Red Skull and, like, Doctor Doom and all these people? Well, the, the, the thing is, is, like, think of it like the CEOs and, like, the investors mm-hmm. are in this room, and then... Trapster is, like, the manager for the local store. <laughs> so they're just, like, he's just, like, this is coming from the top. Yeah, I got to do it. <laughs> you got to do it. All right, no more overtime this week. <laughs> it's coming from the top, guys. You know I would let you do it. <laughs> so they sent Trapster to go kill Spider-Man. <laughs> and he's actually doing not a bad job. Mm. He's updated his formula on his sticky paste she um, say he updated his resume. <laughs> so he's like determined. He's like, I'm gonna show these dudes that like I'm not paste pot Pete. I'm trapster now. And so he's uh, so he ca- he catches Spider Man off guard because Spider Man has only like fought him, him maybe once, mm-hmm. and that was pretty much it. He doesn't really fuck with him at all. I'm not paste pot Pete from Gary Indiana <laughs> anymore. So he, they're fighting. He he catches Spider Man off guard. He hits him with like this like these balls that kind of like explode, mm. and then they cover him in all this like glue. But he also has like grease that he <laughs> shoots. So not only can Spider Man not grip anything, but when he shoots him with these balls, they explode and cover him in the paste. But it hardens super quick. Mm. So he shoots him with the paste, and Spider Man's falling into the bay. The glue is like hardening and everything, and he just splashes into the water. He can't breathe. He can't do anything. And so Trapster sees that, and he's like, finally, I did it. Like, (laughs) I killed Spider-Man. Like, you guys can't say anything to me. (laughs) And so he does that, and he leaves. He's like, cool. No way Spider-Man's getting out of there. I'm I'm set. Uh, Spider-Man uses his mighty strength while under and breaks through the... The uh the glue and then swims back up and he's of alive, course. uh. But Spider Man being Spider Man, he also has his other persona, Peter Parker, mm. who has other you know duties to do. So he's working in the lab with one of his professors, and his professor is trying to build this machine that will essentially give like free energy and everything, and harness energy from other dimensions. And so Peter and him are working on it and. The, prof- the professor is, like, trying to up the power to as high as it can go. And Peter's like, yo, chill. Yeah. We're, <laughs> this is school property. <laughs> Do they know you're doing this? And the professor's just like, don't worry about what they know. Like, let's just get this done. Yeah, just shut up. <laughs> so they turn it on, and then there's, like, a small explosion. Peter saves the professor, but he's hit with all this different radiation from this other dimension. Mm. So he... um he his powers slowly become 
Well, his powers are the same, but he gains more powers. Uh, Peter? Yeah. Okay. So now he, he his spider sense is, like, blaring on, like, level 100. Mm. Everything, he, he can hear everything, sense everything. Everything is just always throwing his spider sense off. And his, his strength is there. And so he's just like, damn, what's going on? Uh, Trapster is back at Cabal telling everybody, like, I killed Spider-Man. You guys can thank me now. And so they're like, well, we didn't see a body. So if you can go get a body, we'll believe you. So he goes back to uh, doing his thing. And he see Peter just out patrolling a Spider-Man. <laughs> and Trapster's just like, ah, oh, shit, like, he's there. And so he pulls out, like, his gun, which is going to shoot, like, more pace from, like, a distance. Uh, but Peter's spider sense is now a lot better, so he senses Trapster from, like, super far away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, so after he, Trapster is about to shoot him, Peter jumps around, beats him up a little bit, basically makes him a fool, and then takes a street cred away from him by tying him up and revealing Spider-Man still alive. And that's the end of that issue. I haven't seen not one act or vengeance at all. <laughs> this is the vengeance. This is a normal Tuesday for Spider-Man. <laughs> and then we move on to Captain America uh, issue 365. So, like I mentioned earlier, um, the Red Skull is part of the uh, the Cabal. Mm-hmm. And at this point, this is not this is still the mm-hmm. original Red Skull from the 40s. Okay. But he's in a new body. <clears throat> and he's going by Mr. Smith. So he's like a big businessman. But really, under all that, he is still a Red Skull. Okay. Um, and so he really doesn't like that he's part of this cabal with all these other villains. Because he thinks himself above everybody else. And he doesn't like that the mysterious guy that brought them all together hasn't told them really anything about what he wants. It's just so they're just hanging out. For yeah, the hell he, of it. he you can t- he the mystery guy is always talking like outside to himself mm. about how these guys are idiots and like they're just part of his plan, but they all think that they're all the top Han show and they're all part of each other's plan, you know? And so in uh Captain America 365 uh, Red Skull learns that uh, all these criminals have been released from this prison. There's been a prison break, mm-hmm. uh, break, and that's because of the mysterious guy. Uh, so he find he starts researching who was, who broke out, and he finds one of them is a controller. So he has like these little discs that he can place on people the back of people's necks, mm-hmm. and basically takes control of them. But if they're powered individuals, he gains their powers as well too. And so Red Skull's like, I need that guy, like, go get him. So he tells Crossbones to go get him. Mm. And so Crossbones goes and finds him. And there, uh, what, he, or he breaks him out of jail. and Or he breaks, he picks him up from the jail. And he's like, hey, Red Skull wants, wants you to come work for him. Mm. So he's like, fine, whatever. Uh, but Captain America is also tracking everybody who's broken out of there as well, and so he figures Controller is one of the more popular, uh, one of the more powerful, dangerous people that he needs to take care of. So he goes after him first. So Crossbones and Controller are together in a helicopter, but Captain America is also on their tail, and so uh, oh no, this is what happened. Sorry, I jumped the gun. Uh, Controller. Uh, is caught by Namor because Namor is also, he was approached by the mysterious guy because the mysterious guy was like, Hey, you've been crossed by all these heroes before join mm-hmm. my cabal and you know, we'll take vengeance. And Namor is like, do you not know who I am? I'm not a villain. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked with these guys <laughs> fairly recently. And he's just like, Oh shit, my bad. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> and so he leaves them. Um, and so Namor is like heading to Hydro Base to go tell everybody, "Hey, this guy just tried to, <laughs> to try to hire me." <laughs> but when he gets there, Hydro Base is gone, 
And you're like, okay, this is weird. So as he's uh, searching to see what happened, Controller and him get into a fight, and Controller snaps the control disc on him. And so he sends, not only does Controller get all of Namor's power, he sends Namor after the Avengers to kill them. And so Captain America is on the search for Controller, but he runs into Namor, and Namor and him get into a big brawl. And Namor is not holding back because, one, he's just kind of an asshole. But yeah. two, he has no control over anything going on. You know what's real quick? You know what's going to be funny is that we've talked so much shit about Namor over the last year. And then this movie's going to come out next month. And he's probably going to be like a favorite. Probably. And <laughs> then we're going to have to differentiate every time we talk about him. The cool name more. I like the cool name more. The Mexican one. <laughs> it's so uh, Captain America and Namor are fighting. And Cap decides the only way to save Namor is by destroying the disc. Mm-hmm. But when he swings the shield around to break it, it like does something where it basically knocks Namor into a coma. He, his body starts like seizing up and then he has like spasms and just falls over and passes out. And Cap is like, oh shit, did I kill this guy? <laughs> <laughs> so he takes him back to the Avengers Mansion and that's where the issue ends. Uh, Captain America 366. Uh, back at the mansion, Hank Pym is looking at the disc to try to figure out if he can uh, release Namor from it because now he's in a coma. Mm-hmm. And he's not sure if he if he can because the controller's technology is very specific and it's tied to like people's nervous systems and stuff like that. So if Hank doesn't know what he's doing, he can either kill Namor or just leave him paralyzed. Yeah. So what he needs is he needs another control disc to kind of analyze and then go in and then see what he can see take what he can take out. Yeah. So he sends Cap after controller again. And so we jump to Controller, who is in, I think, New York, and he's watching the Juggernaut and Thor fight it out in, like, a crowd of, like, hella people just watching this fight. And he's just wearing, like, a trench coat. And he's a big dude. Like, Mm -hmm. he's not normal size. He's just a big guy, but he's wearing just a trench coat. That's all. That's all (laughs) they always hide. (laughs) He's just sitting there waiting to throw his disc at Thor so he can get Thor's power, too. And then uh, Crossbones was supposed to bring Controller back to Red Skull, but he just kind of, like, left him there. Mm-hmm. So Red Skull's like, go get him back. Like, I need him for this. So he's like, all right, I'll go. So Crossbones sees Controller sitting there watching the fight. And he's like, what are you waiting around for? He's like, I need to get Thor's power. He's like, <laughs> oh, I'll help you out. We'll speed this up. So he <laughs> grabs the disc, gets his little crossbow out, puts the disc on the arrow, and then shoots it at Thor, but as he shoots it, <laughs> they turn, and so it bounces off Juggernaut's helmet and just bounces <laughs> away. <laughs> and Controller's like, what the hell? What'd you do that for? He's like, I can't help it if they move. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll figure this out, you dummy. And it just messes it all up. <laughs> so <laughs> Crossbones is like, we'll deal with this later, come on. And so they both leave. But Cap is flying around um, on his air bike, you know, looking to see if there's anything suspicious going on. And what did he see? This this flight machine on top of a building. He's like, okay, that has to be where, you know, they are. Mm-hmm. So as they're taking off, he crashes. He jumps onto the ship, jumps into there. Him and uh, Controller are fighting while Crossbones are just, like, sitting around. But it, Red Skull told him... Don't engage with Captain America. That's my enemy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see you fighting him at all. (laughs) So he just sits there flying the ship. (laughs) All these two guys are fighting it out. I swear to God. If I even (laughs) see one little second of you fighting Captain America, I will beat your ass. That is my guy. I fight him. (laughs) So he's just driving Miss Daisy while these two dudes are fighting in the back. How, How egotistical do you have to be? You're like, no, that's my enemy. <laughs> this is not a my enemy. Like, your enemy is my enemy. Like, whatever the case is. Whatever the saying is. 
And so, and then there's also another guy there named The Voice, um, who basically has the same powers as Control, except he does it with his voice. He just tells people to do things, and they have to do it. So, <laughs> Red Skull has the voice and controller, and he only has the voice to control the controller, and he wants controller to control other people. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> and so, Cap and uh, and controller are fighting. Uh, it gets to the point where the fight is almost is pretty much done. Uh, but all Cap needed was for Controller to try to, like, chip him. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the fight ends on the on the ground, and Controller throws a chip on Cap, and then he jumps away thinking he has Captain America's powers now, but really Cap had, like, a metal shield on his neck so that mm-hmm. it wouldn't work. So now he has the device, and he can go back to the Avengers Mansion to wake up Namor. And that's the end of... Uh, Oh, no, it's not the end, because now Controller is at the Red Skull's office, and Red Skull, basically, whenever the, the Cabal wants to communicate, there's this glowing door that's just on their wall. Mm-hmm. Only he can, act, like, walk through it. So if anyone else opens it, it just, they just walk into a black void. It doesn't end or anything. Mm-hmm. But if Red Skull walks into it, it literally just takes them right to the next room of where the, the meeting is. Mm-hmm. And so... He has controller there because he wants to take control of the mysterious man that is running everything. So he goes into the room and he tells the guy, hey, uh, come to my office real quick. I want to talk to you about something. So he walks into the office and as he walks in, controller throws a disc on his neck, but it doesn't do anything. Mm. And he's like, you can't control me, dude. Like, I have all this power. You're playing my game. I'm not playing yours. And so he just leaves, and then Red Skull's pissed off. And he's like, I don't like this at all. And that's where that issue ends. Oh, brother, now there's too much vengeance. (laughs) And then the next one, it's supposed to be X-Factor, 49 and 50. Um, But from what this says, those issues don't really... It says it's important to the continuity, Mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily important. Because it's only the last pages of those stories that are the important part. Everything else is kind of whatever. But essentially, we find out who the mysterious man really is. Mm -hmm. And it's Loki. Yeah. Yeah. And he wants vengeance on Thor and everybody else for... Just like always. (laughs) Just like always. We know what the deal is, Loki. And then... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm dying... I need water. Ooh, my throat got hella dry all over. <clears throat> I'm going to put that, that part in from Spongebob. I, I need, need water. water. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched many Spongebob episodes by myself, but that's one that I... Anytime I'm thirsty, that's what goes in my head. <laughs> I need water. Mmm, agua. <clears throat> okay. Now we go to Amazing Spider-Man 327. Amazing? Amazing. Why did they have so many different Spider-Man comic books at that time? They had like four. Yeah. Running at the same time. There was like Spectacular Spider-Man. There was Peter Parker. Yeah. Spectacular Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man. Why? And, and I don't know. And they were all... I mean, I love Spider-Man, but I don't know how you can have four different... And they're all at the same time. Yeah. There's not you're just telling me different stories on different days. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? I don't yeah, I don't understand why you would What's the difference between all of them? I don't know. When we did the Craven's Last Hunt, mm. it was six issues and each it was three different books. Amazing Spider Man, Spectacular Spider Man and Peter Parker Spider Man or whatever. But it it was all the about the same Spider Man in different in just different books. Yeah, I don't know why you need four books to <laughs> I don't know. I right now I'm reading the Amazing Spider Man and and then they just put out a, a just Spider Man by itself. And I haven't I don't know. I don't know. 
I'm not sure. Okay, well. Good luck convincing your dad to buy that for you. <laughs> I just bought you Spider-Man, not this one. <laughs> I just want Spider-Man. You bought me Amazing Spider-Man. I don't read this one. I only read Spider-Man. <laughs> I only read Peter Parker Spider-Man, Dad. <laughs> I only read Spectacular Spider-Man. Come on. Not Amazing. You know this by now. We do this every month. <laughs> All right. So, at this point, uh, I keep calling them the Cabal, but it's they're called the Vengeance Conclave. <laughs> they found out that Spider-Man is still alive from Trapster's attempted murder. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, they need to find some way of defeating him. But they also know his powers have been increasing somehow, mm-hmm. and he has new powers. So they need somebody who's really going to like do the job. Um, and so Magneto decides, like, I'll just take, I'll take my time to go defeat him. Like these lackeys aren't going to do it, so let me do it. So he decides to do it, but he his reasoning is he thinks Spider Man is a mutant. Mm-hmm. And so he believes that the, his new powers are some latent mutant ability that had just come in. And so he's hoping he can turn Spider-Man to the mutant cause and have him on his side mm-hmm. so that when shit goes down, it's Spider-Man and Magneto. Makes yeah. sense. And so he's like, I don't know how to find Spider-Man. So he just goes to Central Park and just sits on a bench. Mm. <laughs> he, he just sits it's... next to some lady. Full Magneto costume, and just sits to, sits there waiting for Spider Man to come. <laughs> that's that's the dumbest plan <laughs> ever. And the lady, especially was, for somebody so smart, the lady was like sitting on the bench. She was like, <laughs> she's like, I really hate being at home. She's like, I'm glad I get to be outside. And the Magneto sits next to her, and she's like, I guess I'll just go back inside. <laughs> I should go back home. <laughs> And his costume's not even like a, a nice little slim thing. You got this big ass cape, the helmet. And you just go sit in Central Park. And so Spider Man finally swings by. Him and Magneto have this big fight. Uh it leads to like a a junkyard. And so they're fighting there. Spider Man's actually holding his own. Because his spider sense is super good now, so he's able to dodge like all this sharp metal Magneto starting at him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has laser blast, so he's able to just like fire laser beams from his hands. Um, he's able to change like the density and like the atomic structure of things. So this part I didn't get. I was like, that seems more dangerous. <laughs> but uh, Magneto is controlling, uh, you know, the big magnets that they use to pick up like cars and stuff. Mm-hmm. He's controlling one of those, and he's also controlling what mag what metals it's taking or picks up. So it picks up Spider Man, and then it's about to, he's about to drop the magnet just straight down, so it crushes him. Mm-hmm. And Spider Man, with his new powers, is able to change the molecular structure of things. So he turns it to glass, <laughs> but then he just gets crushed by a bunch of glass. I'm like, wouldn't that be more dangerous? Yeah, now you're just going to get cut up. <laughs> you charge a glass in your neck and your ass. Both you guys are just <laughs> dumb. And so, yeah, he starts freaking, like, he turns it into glass, and Magneto finally realizes, like, the power set that you have is way too different from your original power set. There's no way this is, like, connected to some mutant ability. Hmm. So he's just like, whatever, I'm out of here. And just <laughs> leaves. It's- but then at some point, uh, when they were fighting, Peter knocks a car like clear across the bay. Mm-hmm. And after Magneto leaves, he realizes with his, now he has like binocular vision, uh, that the car actually landed on a boat and the boat's now sinking with a bunch of people on it. So he has to save these people. And he's like, I can't get out there quick enough, like. One, my webs don't, there's nothing for them to reach on to. Mm. So, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And all of a sudden, he starts to float. And he flies out there. And he, <laughs> he picks up the boat. And he just drops it off. And he saves these people. And he's like, okay, this is weird. Like, I don't need to swing anymore. I, I can fly. I don't know how to fly. I don't know if it's because I'm tired. I didn't get a lot of sleep <laughs> last night. 
Or this story is just getting more ridiculous as the time goes. I will say, so this, the Acts of Vengeance, is crossing over at a point in a spider, separate Spider-Man story. Mm-hmm. Where, <clears throat> so basically the, the powers that he has, other dimensional powers, are the universal powers. Like the uni powers. So it's like the universe has picked its new Captain Universe. Mm-hmm. And they chose Peter for a specific reason. It just happens to cross over with the acts of vengeance happening at the same time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, whatever you say, man. <laughs> I don't want to argue with you. And so, that's the end of 327 Amazing Spider-Man. We jump to Spectacular Spider-Man 159. Ooh. Uh, Which one's more special? <laughs> so, uh, another villain that's part of the uh, vengeance committee is the wizard uh who's also a mutant and he can like control people and this and that mm. <clears throat> he decides was the wizard on the in the frightful four i think so okay um he's like okay if if we can't hire people to um kill spider-man let's just get these two guys that i know who are in jail and they'll do it yeah that'll <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he goes to did Magneto not come back and tell them anything <laughs> that happened yeah I couldn't find the guy I don't know what happened I well, never saw him out there <laughs> I gave him till 3 o'clock and I had my own plan so. I was waiting in the park the whole time I don't know where he was he's on the park bench <laughs> this guy said he's going to be here two hours ago <laughs> how rude the old lady's like well I, I gotta go now <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, the wizard is like, we got to release the Brothers Grimm, and they'll take care of Spider-Man. And and I guess they're an Iron Man villain. Yeah. So <clears throat> <laughs> they're like, Spider-Man won't know these guys. Uh, West Coast, East Coast thing. And so the wizard goes all the way to L.A., where they're in jail, breaks them out, and then takes them to uh, New York. Mm-hmm. And... Right now, Peter is very confused about his powers. He doesn't know how to control them. He, He's kind of tired of people just <laughs> bum-rushing him. Yeah. All these villains that he's never fought before are just, like, attacking him for no reason. So he, he's tired of that. He's tired of his powers. He's tired of not being able to do what he wants to do. Um, and so he's just really, like, lost. And so he's just swinging around the city trying to, like, think. And then these two show up. And they're like throwing like they have you seen them before? Is it are they two like red guys? I can't remember if they're all red or if they're blue with like red accents, but they have like white masks that almost look like skulls. But there are two of them. I and they I can't remember what story it was, but there was a story where uh, Tony was fighting these two. In that in that story, it was a while ago. But in that story, Tony was fighting these two guys, and they looked like almost like the thing, but like really, really red. Mm. So it might be two different guys. Might be two different guys, yeah. but essentially, they they kind of get their whole thing from like fairy tales. Mm-hmm. So they fly on clouds, and they throw like magic. I think they had like a magic sheet or something. It one through, and then the other one turned it into something else. But really, they they just want to cause more trouble for Spider Man, so they go to Madison Square Garden, and they use the wizard's uh, like anti gravity disc, and they basically pull Madison Square Garden out of the ground, and just <laughs> their goal is to just let it float into space. Yeah, you know, I know. Last week I said that your story was for sure better than mine, but I'm not sure. <laughs> And these are two different people that I was thinking than what, who I was thinking about. Oh, okay. Brothers Grimm. And yeah, so it's floating in the space. Spider Man's like, I have to bring down a building safely <laughs> and take care of these idiots. I'm I'm done. And so, a big fight leads or happens. Um, the Brothers Grimm get put back in jail. Spider Man destroys the disc, but. Now he has to worry about this whole building coming down. And he remembers his webs now can... 
he can pretty much adapt his webs to become any shape and pretty much do anything because of his powers. So he's able to bring the whole building down safely back to where it was before. <laughs> I wish I had a third person here so I could just look at the third person and like, <laughs> like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? And all the while, Spider-Man is being watched by Doom throughout these. He just sends, like, random cameras out to just watch him do things. And then when Spider-Man tries to web him up, they just explode. <laughs> <laughs> he's, from, he's just chilling in his embassy. Yeah. Just, <laughs> it's like, go, go check out Spider-Man. Because he, he realizes that these powers aren't anything, like natural mm -hmm. and whoever can have these whoever can do the things that spider-man's doing that's power that doom wants so mm -hmm. he's trying to figure out exactly where it's coming from and how he can siphon off this power to give it to himself that's why doom's the best magneto saw it and was like i probably shouldn't mess with this really <laughs> like i'm just gonna head back and doom's like yeah no that's <laughs> i want that <laughs> Doom is always just like he just he just wants the power. That's it. <laughs> and then this one is Web of Spider Man. <laughs> that was the other one. It was spectacular. It was Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man, and then Web of Spider Man. Yeah. <clears throat> Y'all talking about the same guy? So this one, uh, Kingpin. Is again tired of Spider Man <laughs> ruining everything. Of course. So he sends Goliath uh, to go fight him. And this isn't uh, Ben Foster or mm. uh, Hank Pym, but another guy's Goliath. Yeah. So they're fighting on the bridge. Um, Spider Man takes him out pretty easily, even though he's big and tall. His new power just allows him to just knock dude out. Mm. And he's about to be arrested after the fight. But then, like, these uh, shady, like, authorities show up and say, oh, we'll, we'll take him from here. Um, they really work for Fisk. And so they bring him back to the the Vengeance Committee. And they're just like, yo, what happened? You said you can fight him. And he's like, well, I never fought him with these powers before. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter how big I am. Like, <laughs> the dude can fly. And he packs a punch. So they're just like, well, okay, well, that makes sense. We're going to kill you now. Okay, <laughs> uh, you couldn't do it. That's fine. <laughs> and so he's like, "Wait, no! Like, give me another second. Like, I I can do this." And so the wizard is like, "All right, like, oh no, Doom, Doom says, okay, give us a few hours. We we got something for you." So I guess Doom creates some device that they end up implanting in his head that allows him to grow even bigger than before. And so he goes and finds Spider Man again. And he's like, look, we're going to do this round two. Um, but this time he grows, like, super big, like, almost 200 feet tall. And Spider-Man is like, this isn't this isn't good. Like, no. <laughs> your body can't take this. And so his heart, Spider-Man can hear his heart beating, like, extra. Mm -hmm. And he, each time he hits him, it causes him to grow. So he can't really hit him or anything, or else he's just going to keep growing until his heart explodes or until he dies. Mm -hmm. And Goliath can feel like his heart going faster and faster, and but Spider-Man won't hit him until eventually his heart gives out, and he just... It, it doesn't say what happens, but it's implied that he has a heart attack and dies in the middle of the water. This is... <laughs> and now Peter is wondering... Are these powers worth having if it means he is in charge of people's lives and their and their deaths? Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, what else do you want? That's why we all play the Sims. <laughs> I want to be in control. <laughs> and so that's the end of that one. We jump to Avengers 312. <laughs> Are we almost there? Uh, yeah, we're almost there. Oh, thank God. So as there's a group of Avengers, East and West, have united, mm -hmm. put aside their differences, like Biggie and Tupac never did. Rest in peace. Too soon. 
Um, but since they don't have a hydro, hydro base anymore, they're in the bottom of their uh, like their Central Park base, their basement base, and they're trying to like regroup on re- regroup on what happened um, to Hydro Base and who launched the attack. How do you got so many bases in the same city? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I get it if it's in different cities around the the country, the world. Why do you got like three in the same city? <laughs> and so they're they're regrouping and they're trying to figure out what's going on. And the mysterious figure, quote Loki, mm-hmm. is uh, watching them from like magic television. So do, real quick, does everybody know that it's Loki, or do they think it's somebody like? They think it's just some mysterious guy. Oh, okay. We just, the readers know it's Loki. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, Loki's watching on and he's ready to launch his second phase of the attack because now all the heroes are kind of thrown off. The first phase went so well. <laughs> Everybody's thrown <laughs> off. Um, but he notices that his conclave is getting very antsy, um, especially with the Red Skull being there and Magneto being there and. <laughs> he should have known that wasn't going yeah. to work very well. Um, so they start bickering in the office, and Magneto and Red Skull get into it. And uh, then the the mysterious Loki is like, "All right, let's just you know cool things off. Everybody go back, and I'll call you back when we're ready to launch the next attack." Mm. So Red Skull's sitting in his office, and. Then Magneto just comes in and rips the wall off the side of the building. And they start fighting a little bit, but he knows he can't take Magneto. And so uh, they have like a little back and forth. Uh, Red Skull gets away a little bit, but then uh, Magneto's like right behind him. Uh, And Red Skull has a train at the bottom of his building that leads to like the subways. So he jumps on that, and he thinks he's getting away, but then Magneto gets him, and it crashes. And <clears throat> next thing we see is uh, Magneto has taken Red Skull to, like, this bunker <laughs> and just, like, tied him up, left him there with just 10 gallons of water. <laughs> no food, no light, no nothing. And just, like, I was going to kill you, but that would be too easy. So I'm going to let you sit here and die on your own. And he just leaves him in the bunker. With 10 gallons of water. Yeah. And he's like, that's all you have. <laughs> Make it last. <laughs> and then we jump back to the Avengers. Uh, and Freedom Force is there. But right now, they're not Freedom Force. It's just Pyro and Avalanche and the Blob. <laughs> because Freedom Force is taking a break because uh, Mystique is like recovering. So they're under the guise of Freedom Force, but they're really just there just to kind of just fuck shit up for no reason. <laughs> um, so a quick fight breaks out. Uh, I won't get into the details of it, but essentially Blob and... One of the big things that happens, Blob and Vision are fighting, and they both can technically change the density of their bodies to you know either be squishy or soft or mm-hmm. really hard. Um, so the blob really, he like changes his density, but then he also, Hank Pym slaps like some shrink ray particles on him, which shrinks him down super tiny, but because his density is so dense, Mm -hmm. he sinks through the earth (laughs) (laughs) and he just, he falls from the the street level down to the subways and he keeps going and then someone i forgot who says it but they're like i hope blob's okay and vision's like well he can change his density and he's nearly indestructible so even if he went to the center of the earth he'll be okay and i was like damn they just let the <laughs> how are they supposed to save this guy <laughs> yeah no one's gonna be able to get him out of there <laughs> just let this guy sink to god knows gonna, where like, he can't just like take his own pin particles and just grow. He has no air wherever he's going. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah, he might be indestructible, but he's stuck. <laughs> he's gonna stop at a certain he's point. He's stuck being an inch tall, but being as dense as you know 
a six foot tall thing of you know steel yeah he's not getting out <laughs> and no and pyro and avalanche just leave him <laughs> you're not gonna go help your teammate what am i supposed to do <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah. So we skipped that one. <clears throat> and then I'm not going to read that one or this one. West Coast Avengers, uh, Iron Man, Wonder Man, Human, the original Human Torch, and the U.S. Agent. Uh, head to downtown LA, uh, but then they're attacked by the Mole Man and his giant monsters. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, but they were sent to destroy just the regular Avengers, not the West Coast Avengers. <laughs> and so, I only want you to kill the Avengers. And then there's the, the monsters uh, Giganto and Tricephalus. Those are like the big monsters. Like, sounds like an STD. <laughs> Tricephalus. <laughs> or like a, a medication. <laughs> try try the dome. It gets rid of tricephalus. <laughs> Check with your doctor to see if tricephalus is safe for you to take. <laughs> so Iron Man and US Agent Tangle, uh, or they fight with Giganto. Tricephalus uh, gets further inland uh, when he meets up with the wasp, uh, wasp Hank Pym, and uh, Scarlet Witch. And this is weird because this issue was after the last issue mm -hmm. but it's supposed to be flipped because in this one uh scarlet witch is in a coma mm -hmm. but in the previous one she's awake <laughs> and so uh wonder man and torch go in search of where uh the monsters came from and run into the mole man himself uh they lead the mole man they they learn that the mole man believes the Avengers attacked him, but they convince him that it wasn't them, and he recalls his monsters because he realizes it was it was a mistake. Uh, meeting back at the Avenger the Avengers uh, headquarters, everyone compares notes and finally figures out that all of the increase in supervillain activity may seem random, but everything points to the fact that someone out there uh, is trying to destroy the Avengers, um, and that's pretty much it. They just come to the conclusion that. Another person is trying to kill them. <laughs> I've been getting attacked a lot lately. I think somebody's <laughs> trying to get me. And if I didn't know better, I feel like people were trying to kill me. <laughs> End story. <laughs> dun, dun, and the dun, next dun, the next one starts and it's like, I was right. <laughs> they were trying to get me. Uh, Avengers three thirteen oh. in the aftermath of. Uh, the Freedom Force uh, members attacking the Avengers. Mm -hmm. uh, Mandarin decides that he uh, needs to get involved himself uh, because why why let these lackeys do it when he can just do it himself? I can fight too. <laughs> uh, the wizard, seeing that the Mandarin uh, wants wants to get in on it, chooses to go with them, uh, only to get caught up in a in a fight with the Avengers uh, when the Avengers. Uh, who were trying to just sell? They were just trying to salvage the rest of Hydro Base. Uh, when they see Wizard show up, then they stop everything, and he wasn't expecting that many people to be there. Damn, sixty all of you! All the rest of the the Vengeance uh, Conclave are pretty pissed off that these two decided just to go off and do their own thing. Uh, but it's also this is also weird. Only he got out of his. <laughs> His bunker Magneto oh, yeah. left him. <clears throat> Ten gallons of water was all I needed. <laughs> uh, and so they go back to fighting amongst themselves and not really getting to the deep down issue of <laughs> two of their members are just left. Uh, the Avengers are able to drive off Mandarin and capture the wizard, hoping to question him about who's behind all of this. Uh, and watching from afar, Loki... Shit. Uh... Do, 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 do. Loki all but reveals who reveals himself, uh, and then that's pretty much it. So now Loki told everybody 
it's me. Surprise. Because he just shows up. He's like, everybody in the cabal is like, oh, Loki's here. He's like, hey, guys, what's up? I got a surprise for you. Here, let me go get my friend real like, quick. And he just turns around and does a nice little spin move. He's like, it was me. <laughs> he does like, hey, did you guys see that mysterious guy walk through here? And they're like, yeah, he just went through that door. He's like, oh, I'll go get him. Okay. And then he, the mysterious guy walks through another door. You guys see Loki around here? Huh? <laughs> they just keep going back and forth. That's crazy. I guess I'll go through this door again. <laughs> I guess I better find my best pal, Loki. <laughs> We all, he hates my brother, too. <laughs> yeah, da, 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 da. Um, then we jump back to X-Factor again. Not on Marvel Unlimited. Mm-hmm. But essentially, the last few pages again show uh, Loki, the mysterious figure. Uh, he's trying to uh, recruit Apocalypse into the Vengeance Cabal. And he's not having... None of that. I ain't having it. I ain't working with you, Humies. No thanks. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, West Coast Avengers number Listen, 55. Uh, I'm going to tell you one thing. You need to stop ending each of these issues with, okay, it's done. <laughs> or that's about it. Because you keep <laughs> saying that, and I keep thinking, fuck Now it. you know how I felt when <laughs> now you kept we're saying, done. oh, we're almost there. Well, this is a, listen, man. I'm sorry for doing that. I apologize because now I know how fucking. I'm so pissed every time you do it. <laughs> I'm I, not even gonna say when the issue ends. I'm just gonna just say the whole thing. I'm just gonna, okay. I'm not gonna say what issues I'm on or I keep, anything. You keep doing it. I'm like, I keep getting ready to hit the the Paul Walker. <laughs> well, a good thing for you. This is the last one. Okay. All right. So Thor figures everything out. Mm-hmm. Um, although it's probably been pretty obvious, it should have been obvious to everybody. Uh, Thor deduces that Loki is the one orchestrating all the plans, um, because apparently he's still mad about the Avengers getting together in the first place. Uh, the Vengeance uh, Cabal discovers that it's been Loki, uh, and the wizard accidentally leads a diverse, what did I say? I just copied this part from the thing because I was <laughs> I'm just going to read it word for word. The Vengeance con- uh, Conclave discovers this as well when Loki drops his sub- subversant advisor routine and er- erupts at them when the wizard accidentally leads a diverse array of Avengers back to the safe room <laughs> <laughs> and initiates the final confrontation. Uh, elsewhere, Wonder Man and U.S. agent pursue Wanda into space to challenge Magneto and set off another important Avengers storyline. The issue is, yeah, that's pretty much it. So they basically just take down all the villains in one room, and that's it. That was, that was fun. No, one was it. I said forget about it, cuz. I'm not ever going to go back and read that. There's too much. It- too much non-important stuff. It wasn't really like a crossover. It was just Spider Man and yeah. the Avengers. And I, I think I, I've, if this has made me realize, I don't particularly care for uh, team based books. Mm-hmm. Because anytime I read about the West Coast Avengers or like this initiate, this iteration of the Avengers, I'm just bored. Well, is it that you don't like team-based books, or is it that you haven't liked the teams that you've been reading? Well, I mean, like, the X-Men, you would think, I mean, classic X-Men. You still not like reading X-Men stuff? Not particularly. The Avengers stuff? The X-Men stuff, I don't like reading. I think it's because it's so, their stuff is so broad. Mm. They could be in space, they could be dealing with magic, they could be dealing with other mutants, or, you know... Evil humans. Yeah. It's just so broad. Um, I think that's what it is that I don't like. This iteration of the Avengers, I don't care for Wonder Man. I don't really care for the West Coast Avengers at all. Um, and then, like, I guess because I have the idea of what, it, what an Avengers team, what mine would be. Mm-hmm. Seeing, like, Cap not on the team or, like, it being, like, 
just random people like Falcon and Wanda and like yeah. I don't really want a team with, with those people. On no. there. I don't no. find them very interesting. No, I I just, I just didn't like it. It uh, I would say maybe it might be different if you read it, but you read it and it sounds like you feel the same way. Um, but also it's just like the the 20 plus tie-ins and stuff and it's like i the one thing i don't like that marvel does i still kind of now is that they don't necessarily make it clear on what's necessary to the story mm-hmm. when they have events like with judgment day right now at the end of each issue it tells you all of the books that are or tie-ins mm. or it just yeah everything that's relevant to the story in any way they have a whole list of it but they don't tell you which ones like are necessary for you to get the story what's going to push the story forward yeah, like there's different there's judgment day ones with star fox or like fucking what's his name uh iron fist it's like you guys don't have anything to do with like the main story. What do, why do I care what's happening with you guys? But it like, I know that Marvel probably does it just because it's like, just buy them. Yeah. Like buy it and and see how it goes. Yeah. But it's also kind of screwy when like you're trying to like you look at that list after the first issue and you're like, well, damn, that's a lot of shit. And then you buy a couple of them, and it doesn't push the story forward anywhere. Like, it's just like a lateral telling of something that's happening at the same time. And it's like, well, what the hell is the point? Yeah. I just bought this this issue 13 of a comic that I don't have any of the previous issues, and it didn't have anything to do with the story that I was reading. Mm-hmm. So, now what? Now you just have this one issue of something yeah. that you don't care about, but you thought was going to be important to Mm -hmm. the overall story. It's like, there's no point. And then with this one, it's like, I mean, I wasn't reading it at the time, so I don't know how it was going, but I don't think that they've ever done that. Where it's just like, this tie-in is essential. These ones are just happening during that time. Yeah, you don't, we don't find that out until someone online says. Somebody else actually does the work and tells you that. Yeah. It's not essential. There's, that's the reason I found that website because I was like starting to read one because I saw somewhere that it said read Cloak and Dagger or something, mm. and I was like I don't really want to read Cloak and Dagger. I tell you what, I, there's very <laughs> few times I'm ever gonna read Cloak and Dagger. So I look it up, and then that says like, yeah, it's not important to the story. Like maybe I think it said like the last page is like setting up what's going to happen, mm. but for the most part. It's not related to the story whatsoever. The only Cloak and Dagger I've ever liked was in Ultimate Spider-Man, the show. Mm. What was it? And no one even watched the, the live-action show they had on, was it Freeform or something? Mm-hmm. I watched a few episodes, but those all the old Marvel shows before Marvel Studios took over. Mm-hmm. It was just so annoying when, like, you're waiting for some sort of hint or, like, Easter egg, and then yeah. they just wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't, they wouldn't budge. Yeah, I'm good. So, well, I'm a, what are you giving it, just so we can make I'm this I'm going to give it the same as you. I said forget about it, cuz. It just, it wasn't it. Another, but, another, another week of <laughs> stories we didn't like. What was this, three, four weeks in a row, probably? Three weeks? <laughs> I don't think we liked Atlantis Attacks. We didn't like uh, Across Time Caper. And now this. Is it us? Maybe. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> I, I try not to to think that far into it, but yeah, it could be. <laughs> Do we even like comics? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't tell you the truth on that one. I am not 100% sure. I have been reading more DC stuff. I'm still reading Poison Ivy. I started Batman vs. Robin. And they haven't been as bad as I thought they would be. But they don't... 
like Marvel's pushing out a lot right now, comic wise, and DC's not doing that as much. Like I haven't. There's not a lot of new number ones coming out, like new stories. Uh, there's some s- characters that I've never heard of that have some stuff coming up, but yeah. Maybe I don't like comics. <laughs> These stories have just been bad, man. <laughs> we'll see next week. Next week we got a story called uh, Quest for the Shield. It's short. <laughs> so I, we got that. <laughs> and then we got some Spider-Man stuff coming up too. So Nice. You're going to be covering all of his series. <laughs> I don't. I think so. I, to be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> but uh, this that's that's all we got this week, guys. Again, thanks for listening. Thanks for thanks for coming back. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for telling your friends, your family, your kids, your wife, your husband. Your Still boyfriend. haven't heard from any of you. Nobody's messaged no. me. New friend requests. Maybe there has been. I get a lot of new friend requests, but I can't tell if you guys are. Spam or just yeah, <laughs> you guys you guys aren't friends with any of my other friends, so I can't tell. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, hit us up on the the webheads page. Uh, check out our website webheadspod dot com. Um, we got some. Uh, we post all of the every episode that comes out on there. We have recommendations on. Uh, Marvel stories outside of the events that we do. And um, we might have some other goodies popping up there uh, sometime soon. Maybe before the end of the year. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, some goodies. Yeah. Um, So if you can, share it with your friends, your family, anybody. We got stickers. If anybody wants some stickers, let me know. I can send you some. If we're not that cool, I can charge you for a couple of them. But either way. Just just hit us up. Thanks for letting us do this every week. Thanks for coming back and listening every week. We will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.